Hello and welcome to Stephen University. This week we'll be discussing two extraordinarily strange episodes, starting with <laughs> starting with Bluebird. Um, I mean, can we just quickly address that before we before we go into specifically Bluebird? What a weird double bill this was, <laughs> right? Oh yeah. I just said to Dan, I just said to Dan, it's weird because I've got so much more to say on a very special episode than Bluebird. And he was like, oh, it's the other way around for me. We are to clarify what we are going to do for you lovely people is we're not going to release one a week. You're getting one today and one tomorrow. Or are we putting them both up at once? Uh, No, I I think it's going to be one Monday going into Tuesday, sort of Monday night into Tuesday morning. And then one going up, I think, Wednesday night into Thursday morning. So it's yeah. so, so there's a, and then in between them there's a rewind review dropping of the snowman I think. Cool. And we're going to get you, we're going to do the same for the two after the two that air literally over Christmas you're not going to get right till, away till January yeah. maybe. Yeah, basically it may they're probably not coming till January but we didn't want to rather than stretching out these episodes for the sake of it to hide that gap we were like well we're going to record them before let's put them up before and then there'll just be a bit of a gap uh, yeah, before so we discuss that, that, the that, final two uh, yeah that cuz that that was the the final two that was the cuz that yeah, was the problem we that was the problem we kind of faced actually was like we were looking at it and we were going well we can either do one a week from this point on because we knew we could get two recording sessions done in sort of mid to early December to do these two episodes and the two that follow it. But the two after, we knew we weren't going to get to record till January. So our plan was to record them as a two and then release them one a week. Like we went, actually, we've got them. They'll have been recorded. Let's just release them promptly and then have a gap for the last two. Um, so, yeah, it's just so, so everyone's aware um, that these two and next week's two episodes will be, rec- will be covering within the sort of four or five days that follow um that will not be the case with uh with the with the final two currently announced episodes of steven universe future which is episodes uh, nine and ten um i've forgotten what they're called now one of them is called prickly something one of the, oh no one of them is graduation uh, and one's prickly but the final one is prickly pear there you go prickly pear so one of them is like yeah so whole little, the, little graduation the, and prickly pear or whatever the, they're called the more we power through these, the more the more it feels like it might just be these ten, doesn't it? But I think that's a, a, probably a more appropriate discussion for tomorrow's episode mm. uh, or the the next episode. Um, yeah, what uh, I've got feelings about a very special episode. Oh, I'm sure you that? have. I have a feeling. <laughs> I have a feeling. A little tease for the episode in a couple of days, guys. I have a pretty strong feeling that little uh, a very special episode is going to be this season's. Um, Either Garnet's universe or um, what was the uh, the what was the uh, the episode of Uncle Grandpa? Say Uncle. Uh, say Grandpa. <laughs> yeah. Say Uncle. Say Uncle. Sorry. Yeah. What did, what, what did it though? No, we talk. We talk. We talk about it. No, I need to know now. What was the what was the feedback from other people on the very special episode? If I didn't like it that much, am I likely to be scorned for my opinion? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Okay. Cool. Right. I think it's. I think. Okay. I think it's. I think it was a bit of a mixed bag response. Okay. Cool. Well. Yeah. Uh what are your what are your feelings on Bluebird, Dan? Um so I think it is ultimately a really good episode. In its in isolation, I had a good time watching it, right? I thought the jokes were good. I love the characters, you know, I love the the new the new fusion. Um loved the way it played out as like a comedy rather than a threat. Mm-hmm. Um you know this whole the whole thing of Greg's hair. You know the sadness of that, and then like on the beach, like consoling him as his hair floats away. Like there's so much to love about this episode, right? Yeah. But is it not massively hampered by the fact that last time we saw Aquamarine, she was this massive threat they could not overcome because she was too powerful. Yeah. So an Aquamarine well, can... fusion, they just stomp it in a second. What? Are you kidding me? <laughs> What? Yeah, I I, yeah, I think like... I think in the context of Steven Universe Future, as a show, it's fine, but in the context of Steven Universe, the whole thing, this character used to be a genuine threat, and very little has changed other than Steven's pink powers. But it's not even stink- Steven's pink powers that stop the threat. So it's like this is a brilliant piece of television in its uh, ten minutes of isolation. It's 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 a fun little romp. There's a bit of action. 
uh, not so much on the emotional side of things, but we still get a sweet moment with Stephen and his dad at the end. You know, where he's like, "I'm really proud of you, son. You, you know, you always give people, you always give people a chance. You know, I love how you believe in everyone. That's lovely. I'm all, that's sweet. It's so it's got it's not as uh, powerful as the as the, some of the messaging from last week's episode with the sort of subtext about abusive relationships and um, and and the trauma you can you can carry with you from those sort of relationships as you move forward. Um, nothing as heavy as that, but yeah. it does have a I little of everything. It less balanced than than than, than um rev- volleyball. Uh, re- yeah volleyball revolutionary revolutionary pearl utena but but it just suffers I think from the, the threat issue because I just I just couldn't my brain particularly on the rewatch could not get around I I just kind of went with it with my initial viewing but my second viewing this morning I I couldn't get around the the, the reality of. Of Aquamarine's depowering. It makes sense for Ruby to be a bumbling, threatless villain because that's what Ruby always was. And maybe the premise is that together Ruby brings Aquamarine down to that level. I don't know. But dear Lord, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because I think, you know, like as you said, not every. Whilst we praised volleyball for. And I still think, and I, you know, I have a. Um... Yeah, we shall see what's coming, but it feels like volleyball may be the high bar of the of the season. It certainly is so far. Um, but not every episode has to do everything as well mm-hmm. as volleyball did, as as you yourself said. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think so. I I didn't. I was sat there and I just couldn't really remember where Aquamarine left off. So I I didn't bump against that as much as you. Hearing you say it, I think you're right. Like, wasn't there a scene where she like? defeated them all in yeah. a spaceship like like she literally did, she defeated she, she, them she, all like. she, she defeated them all kidnapped steven and they all just looked on as she drove away in her ship menacingly with steven captured i mean it was because <laughs> oh, they, they, she, oh, she was she defeated them all so badly steven had to give himself up to save the people she'd kidnapped instead like yeah i remember remarkable like she absolutely she 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 beat the crap out of pretty much all of them, if memory serves. So like, yeah. uh, she was a genuine threat. They that they really struggled to overcome. And even if it wasn't quite as clean cut as there was a big fight, maybe she separated them or whatever. It doesn't matter. She was a genuine threat. Um, lots of tension, I mean, not played for jokes. Um, just well, there were jokes in the episode, but she, her threat level was not played for a joke. It just seems so strange to see her that way now, and it, and I really struggled to get past that on my second view, which is a shame, because I, again, I absolutely must insist this is a brilliant episode, <laughs> otherwise. I did, um, it's funny, because it, it's weird, because like I say, I didn't come up against that, I have a bit now, but it's funny, because you're that, that side of things makes me feel a bit better about the thing I did come up against, which was like, it's, you know, in Steven Universe Future has been so about Steven taking on these villains and stuff. It, I found it odd to see him in a position where he couldn't, and then the other guys needed to, to fuse to, to stop it. Um, and I just thought, I was a bit like, that jars with the rest of the show a little bit for me, where we've seen, you know, Steven as this all-powerful thing. Um but then hearing that explanation, well, you know, they couldn't all take her on in the past. She was so powerful. Kind of makes me go, oh, okay, I guess that makes a little more sense. Yeah, because I, I, almost... I guess you're right. Because at the end of this episode, he, he is struggling to beat her, isn't he? On and a... also, let's not let's not forget as well, they don't beat them. Well, yes. They correct. Well, they, like, it's a little bit um, revolution or evolution of the Daleks, whatever that episode was called. Where, um, where you know, the ending is the Daleks are out there and they're just, you know, that's a threat. And um, that's how this episode ends. They don't they don't actually defeat them. And it, and it was weird because I was kind of watching it going, well, there's no you're not going to you're not going to get away with a redemption arc here because of what you've done in the rest of the episode, which is, which is you know, fine. That isn't a criticism. Um, this is just my yeah. I, 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 gonna, I'll you, be honest you, with you. I, I'm tired of every single gem getting a redemption arc. I, I, I I'm, yeah, it's, and, it's too much. It, like some of these guys can't change. Like I'm sorry, but yeah. not everybody in the world is going to change. Like uh, yeah, it, it, it seems ridiculous to keep sort of doing it with everyone. So you know you're not going to get a rese- redemption arc, and they've not built the episode that way. And it would seem really out of place for this show to bubble them. So I was sort of sat there going. Well, how's this going to end? And I don't know if I love... Well, if they come back and we see her again, and then great. 
that's fine doing that ending. If you've done that ending because bubbling doesn't quite seem right and you've got to do something, less mm. a fan of that. Especially when, as you say, she was so powerful. Aquamarine was so powerful before. Um, yeah, so it all so much of this show is riding on whether it's 10 episodes or more, but like, yeah, I, I, if, and I, if, I'm actually starting to lean to it's probably closer to 20. It can't be as many as 50 because yeah. I just don't think they had they were in production for long enough to have done that. Um, but yeah, it, it is straight. I hope they come back. I do. I, 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 in fact, I'm starting to wonder if the ending of this show is like all these villains that we've come across in the last couple of. Well, yeah, so that, and I think I, I think I said that like a yeah. few weeks ago. Like, well, maybe it's like maybe you know, it's all of them at once. An alliance, um, and I think, and I still think that would be pretty cool. Um, but yeah, yeah, you've made an interesting point there though, because Stephen goes pink in this episode and beats them quite handily, mm. and then. But they're not fused at that point. I think they unfuse to make a point. To be like, ah, look, it's, it was us all along. And then he goes pink, fights them as a two. And they can't fuse again. Because the reason they fuse is out of their hatred of Steven. And then they have that great moment where he makes a sappy, a sappy speech. And they're like, oh, God, I hate Steven so much. And they confuse again. And at that point, they do beat Steven, it seems. So maybe it's not as one-sided as I thought. But with that said... You know, he's no longer pink in that situation for some reason. Um, I guess he's not as mad anymore. He's just more like, what is this? And then, and then, uh, you know, Alexandra just comes out and in one swoop just squishes them, which, you know, is, mm. by the way, is really brilliantly foreshadowed. I don't know if you recall, <laughs> but in earlier in the episode, um, uh, Garnet says to Stephen, don't worry, if she tries anything funny, we'll be there to squash her. And that's literally what happens. It's, I noticed that. Yeah. On the re- I noticed that on the rewatch. I was like, "That's hilarious." <laughs> she describes the end of the episode like two minutes in. There's also an element of like, you know, you, they didn't have the time left in the episode for this kick-ass action fight. Um, and isn't it weird that there are times where they choose to fight individually, and we get to see some kick-ass action fights? Because there's an element of. There's probably other examples where you could have just done that, people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's true. I mean, that's true of any like the, of any of these sort of yeah, cartoons. Know. That's like, fair. That's you know, fair. You, it's the same argument as why didn't they always just go straight to the Megazord in Power Rangers and stomp on the thing when it was small? Because you the, know that was the monsters when it, the monsters only grew when Rita made them grow. Would be my counter argument to that, Dan. Yeah, so why don't the Power Rangers make the robot while it's small and before Rita can throw her stupid staff to the earth or whatever she does to make them big, just stomp on she, it then. She's absolutely... Oh, yeah, she does. she throw the staff or does like lightning come out of it? I think I think Rita used to point her staff at the earth and lightning would come out and make them bigger and I think Zed would throw down his Zed staff. Zed the through the staff. I think you might be right. Yeah, I felt... Um, I, either way. My point the, is... The bigger... It's, it's that, it's that the, same the, the, sort of like... Bigger, it's, it's kids' TV logic. Sometimes you've just got to sort of... Little things like that the, you've got to brush off because otherwise the shows the, just would never... They, they'd be boring because that's what they do every week and there'd be no fighting at all. More than why didn't they go straight to Megazord, why didn't they morph to fight the putties? That was the one that always got me. Oh, yeah. yeah. They always fought the putties in like plain clothes, just themselves. Well, my assumption with that is because that footage didn't exist in Japanese for them to do. <laughs> well, yes. Yeah, there is that. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes these things weren't out of. Uh, <laughs> sometimes these things were more about practicality than not. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. so yeah, and, and I guess that was it. Here they had to fit. The, 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 you know, the story had to be wrapped up. I, I mean, I don't know why Stephen couldn't just go pink again to do it, but I guess for the joke of uh, of of Garnet earlier saying, and if there's any trouble, we'll squash them. You know, and then them just doing it is pretty um, good. Yeah, but also they've been fairly consistent. Like, whilst he's in danger, there's no one's no at that moment. They're not riling him. They're not goading him. If you think mm. about it, it's it's references to his mum. It's the fact that they were upsetting his dad. The fact that they, you know, I think Jasper was criticizing like him and his ability. This is this is a fight at that point. There's not. I don't think they particularly goad him into becoming Pink. Pink hasn't been. I need to supercharge. Pink hasn't been used in Pink Steven. Sorry, I mean obviously hasn't been used in my view, and I'd have to you know rewatch it. There may be an example I'm forgetting. I hold my hands up to that, but it's not been used to like supercharge his powers. It's not the it's not that big button on the Fast and Furious cars. It's when he's being goaded or or prodded into into that rage, like you know, like so many of us. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, here he does do it in this episode. He does it. He does it when they, they when they hurt his dad, basically. You know that. You yeah, know. but that I would argue that's goading. Yeah, yeah. Him I, I, I'm him a, into, that's yeah. me agreeing with you. I'm yeah. saying it's, it's oh use, right, right, right. It's yeah. use in this episode is only in that moment. Um, that's an interesting actual point because in my head it's you know it's more powerful Stephen, but actually we don't strictly speaking know that, do we? Because when he does it in no. the Jasper episode, the first one. He does continue to fight Jasper, but he doesn't exhibit powers. I don't think that we didn't already know he had. Does he? He makes the shield um, come and he I puts bubbles on bit... his. He puts bubbles on his fist to punch her, and he's just a bit stronger, isn't he? Yeah, it does. I, that is. It's just like it's like a certain amount of like anger. It's, it's like rage strength. It's like you know that like the extra strength you get from just being really angry. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. I hadn't even thought of it that way because in my head he just always was very clearly more powerful, but not necessarily. Actually, the show hasn't really 100 percent demonstrated that. Can I cover one thing because we get this comment? We've had this comment on almost every episode we've done of this so far. It can't just be ten episodes. We know at some point he comes across White and um, what's the other one? The that's in the oh the big the big sort of worm monster. Okay, let me just cover something off here. Um, first of all, I didn't think they'd fit in Jasper to these ten, and Jasper was in the first episode, so they could. We don't. We don't know they don't fit them in in the next four to six episodes. So yeah, know, I don't. That's... I don't think many people were predicting that half of a very special episode would be a Mary Popping spoof centered around her and Onion. So yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, precisely. So there, there are there are some there are some, uh, you know. A lot of questions there about like like you know you can't assume those characters aren't showing up in these the way the the way these have been paced you just can't I'm afraid sorry like I I know it might not seem it from the descriptions but it doesn't mean they're not so I rule that argument out almost completely um, and then the other thing can I think a lot of people are working under the worms that the worm monster is Stephen theory which I I'm sorry I'm not on that train that's the I mean, if it's true, fine, but it, as a theory, it's one of the least basest theories I've ever seen. There's there's literally, other than people pointed out the number of points on the worm monster and the number of points in Stephen's hair, like, I'm sorry, it's, it, it, there's no evidence. If it turns out to be the case, you guys fluked that, because there's, honestly, there's absolutely no solid evidence that that thing turns out to be steven i don't understand the people think that he's going to rage into that monster basically uh, right okay um and is the monster pink no <laughs> i well i don't personally no i don't <laughs> i don't i don't either chris I, and if it doesn't be true I, then i'll hold my hands up but like I, yeah i don't the, the prominence of it in the shot i think is just a stylistic choice because the, that's the other argument is oh it's prominently featured in the shot it like leans its head up and its eyes glow in time with the music it's the only thing in that shot that's animated and i'm like well yeah but that's like a stylistic choice isn't it like it's yeah it, i i I'd, I'd say on the 10 episodes thing as well like and i know it's coming up a lot and it, like i say i think i think it may come up on the next episode as well i think that's cartoon Net- network's fault for not clarifying what the hell's going on but yeah i think yeah one it's it's cartoon network's fault and and two like i know we keep discussing it but that's from that's from fear and that's from like oh god like some things are getting done for the potentially you know it feels like some things are getting done for the wrong reasons if it's just 10 and just to clarify like in terms of you know oh it can't be 10 because did it and i've not particularly read those comments so apologies if i'm inflicting a tone on them that isn't there but let me tell you now if it's not if it's more than 10 Dan and I are not going to be upset that we were wrong and wasted discussion time on it. We're going to be thrilled that there's more episodes of the show. Like this is a, and, like another. This is a classic example we come across sometimes well, where it's like we're not we're not wanting to be right here. This is concerned that we're right, but I would love to be wrong. I would love for there to be twenty because it means there's twenty more episodes of Steven Universe Future, or like another ten or whatever. Yeah, so, I, I mean, uh, I mean yeah. the thing is, I'm still leaning towards there being about twenty. To be honest with you, so it wouldn't even be a question of us being wrong. It's just that right now, it so could be ten. Like, does that make sense? Like, yeah. I, based on yeah. production time, like, from when I know they started producing these episodes to when they roughly finished, I sort of extrapolated from that 20-something episodes-ish. 20 to 20-something, right? So, like, 20 to 26, maybe. But if it, it... The way it's been scheduled and a bunch of other, like, things and the way the actual plot's being done, it absolutely could be 10. 
very easily. Yeah. Um, I feel... Um, yeah, and I agree. And also, I think... Um, but I, I think the argument, hopefully, against it is also that Cartoon Network... I think would surely make a big deal if they were building to the finale. Uh, you, um, but um, you can go back on that, surely. Um, the, the finale of the show ad, and they didn't say anything. <laughs> True. Good point. Uh, they <laughs> did give it a worse title <laughs> instead of calling the whole thing Battle of Heart and Mind. Um, but uh, anyway. Yeah. Um, but we've, we veered very far away from um, Bluebird. So... Um, I I thought as well, fair play to it for, and I guess they get away with it because the ending is fundamentally, oh, the problem's not been resolved, we're still out there. But I thought, especially with the criticism we've given other episodes for pacing, I was quite worried this would be another Rosebud situation when we had quite a long montage of... Stephen thinks Bluebird's an enemy, but actually she's not, and she's doing something yes. harmless. We had quite a lot of that, and I was like, "Oh no, is this gonna be? Is this going to be the thing that I point at and go, you could have cut some of that down?" Uh, but actually, I, I guess because of the type of ending they gave it, I thought that actually the pacing of this and what they got through for eleven minutes was was quite good. Yeah, I, I'd agree. I, I, that montage, I think, could have potentially depending on what they were planning on doing with the ending veered on being a little long um uh because it's like it's one joke three times so it's like yeah it, but admittedly it's the, it is the rule of threes because the, the third or fourth one obviously then is that it's real so i guess that is just the, the you know the, the the old comedy rule of threes um mm. but and also it does give us that brilliant amethyst joke which which just i like i was like i i i <laughs> it, it all felt weirdly out of character but also just right and like funny uh, so for those who don't remember if you're watching this in the future it's the joke where steven's like here we are in the future yeah, God, we can't use the word future at all anymore can we in this podcast <laughs> um it's the joke where steven's like being pranked by bluebird repeatedly and she's like oh she's continuing to prank me uh Look, she's leaving these horrible drawings around everywhere. Look at them. They're like trash. And Amethyst is like, that's my artwork. She, she's like, my art career will never get started. It's like, it's so weird. It's yeah, I thought that was weird. Especially because like, I was a bit like, Amethyst, I've seen you draw better. Like, yeah, this is weird. Uh, yeah, it's... It's a. It was a weird joke, but it was a. It, it, to be fair, it, it was funny. Um, oh yeah, no, I laughed, but yeah. but yeah. So I, I could see in a world where they needed a, required a more complex ending than they gave. Um, like you write, that might have felt a little bit like a moment or a beat too many spent on that just to sort of because it may have detracted from any, but because it got this intentionally sudden ending, and you know. Uh, that whole, you know, where we'll be out there hating you, and then they fly off into the sky and like the little flash pings. That's um, a Pokemon reference. Um, so in Pokemon, where at the end of every episode when he defeats Team Rocket, there it's always like some sort of explosion or something, and it sends them flying off into the sky. And as they're flying off into the sky, they go Team Rocket blasting off again, and then you see a little ping in the sky so this you know we'll be out there hating you and then disappearing into the sky is is, is a very direct reference i, I think thought, to, in, into that i thought that ping was a reference to joe pesci's tooth in home alone damn it oh well <laughs> good that would have been um, a good, that would have been really a good reference <laughs> bad joke put it on the wikipedia someone <laughs> yeah just fuck with someone and put it the way yeah del- I, I've, go to the wikipedia and put the like if someone's already put that it's a team rocket reference delete that and write reference to Joe don't Pesci. delete that because that's definitely the case like just, <laughs> just add it and an alternative interpretation is and i'd love to see it like just continuing to grow and grow like any any moment ever from any show where there's been a sparkle <laughs> this is a clear reference to joe pesci in. um did you notice um what music was playing when the when he went when he first went back to the party? Was it "Here We Are in the Future"? No, go on. It wasn't. What it was. was it? it was an instrumental version of "Haven't You Noticed I'm a Star." Yeah, that's cool. That's a nice little nod. I thought that was a fun little thing because that's a song we haven't heard yeah. in a long time. So when he yeah when he when he first goes home and they're having a party for the new gem that's arrived, that's the that's the song. It, it it's not playing in the background for the entire party, but it's there when he first arrives, first walks into the party, and first meets Aqu- Aquamarine. Uh, sorry, not Aquamarine, Bluebird. Uh, Bluebird Azurite, well. which, you know, 
since that was the title of the episode, we we probably should have guessed. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. I think most people did guess that the fusion would be called Bluebird, didn't they? I don't know. I saw somebody use a different name for the fusion, uh, like just a few days ago. So I assumed that oh, we hadn't okay. figured that out. But but on the on the on the subject, actually, of most people knew. Um, don't you just love the running gag in this that everyone knows that it's that it's, yes. <laughs> That it's them. Yeah. That and then in, when they separate and they're like, ah, it was us all along. Eyeball and Aquamarine. And, and, oh, no, Aquamarine and Ruby. And he's like, yeah, we knew. And they're like, well, then why are we all so nice to us? And they're like, because we're nice. Like, what do you mean? Yeah, and that, I, in, the, in that moment, I was like, ooh, are we going to get a redemption arc? <laughs> like, are they going to realize, like, oh, shit, everyone... Everyone thought we were the villain, but still yeah. was still nice to us. But um, even when they're in the bathroom, Garnet's like, you know, I think, you know, she was like, I think Bluebird's a future Jackery and Eyeball. Garnet's like, well, duh, it's pretty obvious. Is it Garnet that says that? Yeah. I know, that sounds like an Amethyst line. I can't remember, but yeah. No, I think Garnet's like, we all know. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, because I, um, I, I wrote did... the line down, though. I got it in quote marks. Well, duh, it's pretty obvious. But that sounds like Amethyst in my head, but I'm remembering it as Garnet. So maybe it... I, either or. I had um I in terms of the beginning one probably more appropriate trip for the next episode but I love that we I love that the advert they're filming is the advert we then see in a very special episode <laughs> I thought that was uh very clever yes um, yes but also I I loved the pranks like and how they're just slightly off kilter I feel I there was a slight twinge because when we first heard the giggle. I'd forgotten like this was the Aquamarine um, eyeball episode. Like right. I just hadn't. I was just watching the episode. So when we first saw the crappy plank pranks and heard the giggle, I was like, "Spinel," um, which obviously it did. Right, out. right, right. Yeah. right. No, so that cl- they released um, that clip um, early. Um, oh, did they? they? They yeah, just just the 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 the, 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 the them finishing filming the video and the pranks up to, up to the giggle. Mm-hmm. Um, they did it last week as well. They released the clip of Stephen Amethyst on the bench talking vaguely, you know, like there's one gem that won't come home, you know, it's like as a little teaser. They tend to, it seems that they're going to do this every week, like about, I don't know, like sort of five to six hours ahead of the release. Maybe they're going to put out a little, just a little teaser clip. Uh, it seems to be what they're doing anyway. Um, and, uh, yeah, that giggle, as soon as I heard it, I was like straight on the Discord, like, Aquamarine and Flyball Fusion, it's good times. Like, so yeah, but that's only because I had the time, obviously, to like pass it, because obviously I was seeing it as a clip from the episode Bluebird. So, whereas, yeah. I guess you yeah, were sitting I, I, down I, I, to watch an episode one of two, and you yeah. sort of, you'd sort of maybe not particularly put it, like, thought specifically about which one it was you were sitting down to watch. Um, no, I, yeah, yeah, I, I, could, I could see somebody it, who, I mean, look, we're, 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 the, we're the idiot fans that do a podcast and spend a lot of time reading the synopsises and what have you. A lot of people probably don't do that and will have sat down to watch this episode and had that think... experience of thinking maybe it was Spinel. Actually, I could totally see somebody thinking that. So that's a, that's an interesting uh, interesting question, Daniel. Daniel mm-hmm. Frederick Doolin. Yes. Um, do you think this episode, for those more casual viewers, and let's not forget, this is technically a different show, do you think this episode does enough to remind or indeed inform the audience of who Acma Marine and Eyeball are? Especially Acma Marine. I feel like for some reason Eyeball is a bit more Yeah, I don't know why I remembered Eyeball more. I did know who Acma Marine was, but we we do this. If I'd have been watching it completely cold, hadn't had those discussions, hadn't known that I might have struggled. Do you think the episode does enough? Obviously Stephen draws them on the on the mirror. Um, yeah, and it, it does uh, enough. Uh, yes and no. It it is done very quickly, but technically the information is there. Um, it's not properly reinforced, uh, which is uh, so. There's, I I found this when doing exposition in scripts of my own. There's, it's one thing to have a character outright say it, but if it's said in a quick sentence and not at some point reinforced, either by being repeated or visually then backed up. Um, it's mm. it, it it doesn't really land, and when I say visually backed up, I don't just mean drawing the character. Um, I mean visually demonstrate the thing in which he's describing. So, for example, in this case, what he says is uh, Aquamarine. You know, Aquamarine who tried who kidnapped me, um, and Ruby who tried to stab me, and then um, or Eyeball who tried to stab me, and then threw me under the bus with the diamonds on Homeworld, and that's all part of that wanted arc 
you know, where he and Lars end up in in, in space and Lars turns pink and stuff. Because obviously it's Aquamarine that kidnaps Steven to take him back for that trial. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but again, see, I've already done it. Now. I'm already filling in details for you. I'm saying, oh, it's Aquamarine that takes him back for that trial. The way he says it, maybe, I think if you, you could have either done quick flashes to show it, um, mm. just to demo, just to jog it in me. But because so technically the information is there, and if you're paying close attention, you'll pick it up. But people don't realize that when you're just watching a TV show, you don't pick up everything, even if it's outright said. That's just not the way people's brains take information in. It's just not. You'll always miss the odd line or two, or not realize something was said. Like you rewatch an episode and you go. Oh, I didn't catch that the first time, and it's like a perfectly over line of dialogue. Do you know what I mean? Like that. So, so uh, yes, technically the information is there, but for a casual viewer, would they have understood? I don't think they'd have known the full context of the characters, but I think it would have been for the benefit of this episode because, of course, the context of the characters has shifted. <laughs> so you'd go, "Oh, it's old yeah, enemies." It's fair. old. You'd go, "It's old enemies," and that's enough. And it would actually yeah, probably improve your viewing yeah. of the episode. So it's a, that's a really complicated question. Basically, is is, is, is there's no lo- there's no too long didn't read uh, answer for that because it is complicated. It's it's a question of exposition, but also of necessary information for just this story to function. And honestly, this story functions better if you don't know the, the history, particularly for Aquamarine. Um, so yeah, it's it's a bit mixed up. But I, they get away with it, I think. But the opposite version where you do remember exactly who they are actually causes more problems. <laughs> yeah. I think that's I think that's fair. Um visually I thought Bluebird looked great. I thought she was um mm. again a really great, you know, fusion visually of the two individual characters. I thought the personality was really fun i think like you say you if you remember their previous personalities too much you might come up against it mm-hmm. but actually she was a very well-defined character here well i, th- I think she was true to the character of of the what she was originally she's she's she behaves in the same way aquamarine mm. the, the problem but, is more that she was a, a genuine threat last time she came and now she's sort of has brush offable like you know she's yeah. dismissed in a gag you know and that's kind well, of she stopped she's stomped like an insect <laughs> yeah she's yeah ultimately she's stomped like an insect and that is problematic for me remembering her being quite threatening did um did did and i know we heard aquamarine talker but i'm right it, it's less it, the voice is less british when <laughs> when when the two characters are separated um I didn't know. It's, Aquamarine had a pretty British. Aquamarine, she fairly British. Okay. Yeah, she was fairly British when she first showed up. She it did. It did feel a little bit like they toned it down when she spoke in this episode. Actually, now I think about it. Yeah, but she yeah, was like she, I, she was quite Britishy in the in the uh, original um, Aquamarine episode. I, if memory serves me. Yeah, because that's that's where the question comes from. Because obviously you hear you hear Bluebird speak before before they separate. Yes. when she spoke, I was like. Oh well, they've gone really British, and then I was like, "Oh, but actually, I think Aquamarine was quite British, like, and quite that was quite cool." Um, and then when they separated and she spoke uh, as in Aquamarine, or I was I like, com- "Oh, maybe." Or am I completely misremembering? Have I added that in my head because it made look sense? Up a, look, watch a clip, Dan. Look up a clip. Let's do Should this. Yeah, a clip of Aqu- the original Aquamarine talking. Yeah, man. What was the? Yeah, so it was, it was. It was an episode. It was "Are You My Dad?" Wasn't it? Was the name of the episode yes. because she was looking for my dad, which she called Greg that um, this week. Mm. Or was it "I am my mum"? Would that be? A I am my mum was the second episode. It was "Are you my dad?" I am my mum. But she did more speaking in "I am my mum," didn't she? Because that was when the big fight was. No, because "Are you my dad?" is on when she was walking around asking everybody, "Are you my dad?" She was. T- she spoke oh, yeah, in true. both. She spoke repeatedly in both. Um, let me see if I can find a clip though. Not Here we are in the future. <laughs> this doesn't make future. great YouTube's audio podcasts. Uh, let's have a look. I am. My There's dad. nothing to hear because Dan's looking it up. Here we go. Here we are in the future. Here we go. He's searching you YouTube for the clip. Are you listening? I've got the clip, mate. Oh, you found us. That was her, but. Running away? 
Steven, save yourself. Yeah, it's kind of like yeah. partly British, isn't it? You know, now that I think about it, this Steven does seem to know everyone on our list. Ah. There you go. Yeah, that's more British. <laughs> yeah, that's quite. It's kind of British, isn't it? It's, it's, it's that. Yeah, that's. Well, it's, so it's definitely. I would argue personally, for in my in my ears, uh, and in bearing in mind, I'm hearing it like you guys are hearing it more direct than me, because um, I'm hearing it through headphones, pair of crappy headphones. Yeah, uh, yeah, through a through a phone equipment, whereas you, it's that's picking up directly to the mic for you. Um, I I would argue that's way more British than what we got from her it, when she was um, unfused this this time yeah or maybe just maybe the problem was we were just comparing it to bluebird who was like british times 10 <laughs> yeah maybe yeah but yeah, yeah bluebird bluebird might as well have been eating a custard cream and a drinking a cup of tea <laughs> yeah while playing cricket and but you know having a crumpet on the go <laughs> um yeah it was making making bad choices politically um yeah making horrendous choices politically um in the background she's just voting for boris (laughs) that's a true villain right there (laughs) i don't mean to laugh at my own joke but i laugh to stave off the tears right um the recent the recent general election is still quite raw for dad and i as you may be able to tell yeah, uh, if you don't know what happened in the UK, we're doomed. Um, anyway, moving on. Um, it's all on fire. Uh, couple. Uh, uh, Here yeah. we are in the future. <laughs> Here we are in the future, and it's dark. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, couple... nothing to do. Tory's in charge. <laughs> the hospitals will close. The schools will too. <laughs> <laughs> the Tories will keep keep getting richer, and no, so won't you. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, anyway, um, so a couple of quick notes just I made of the episode that I wanted to make a note of. Like, um, love the idea of the van coming in via the warp. I think that's such a mm. great idea. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love Amethyst's casual as she comes out of the out of the house before she spots that Stephen's in a fight with the uh, with Bluebird. She like comes out of the house like Stephen, your dad's gonna have to move his van. Like like it happens every week. Like oh, he's parked his van in the middle of our home again. God damn it, Greg! <laughs> like it's a regular occurrence. It's so good. It's subtle, but it's a very good gag. Um, I love that they foreshadow Greg losing his hair. That when they go in the toilet to talk about Aquamarine at the party. Uh, a bluebird, sorry, at the party. Greg is just brushing his hair and humming in a very caring way. <laughs> it's really nice. Um, they've got a new picture replacing. I feel like they had to do that because I the... don't think it's been a huge running theme of the show that Greg loves his hair. <laughs> it hasn't, but they do enough here to make it work, right? Mm. Like, like they do, that, yeah. There's that brilliant moment later in the episode where it's Stephen. Why is Greg crying in the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> which is just such yeah, a nice which is such a nice passing joke um what do we think let's talk about that bit then. let's talk about the greg of it all so so uh, yeah the, for those who don't remember but i can't imagine you can't remember, don't remember this i feel like this this is going to be kind of iconic um why I, dan 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 why wouldn't they why wouldn't they remember because because they might be listening to this in the future here we are in the future <laughs> Oh dear. Uh, <laughs> um, the, I, I, so yeah, Aquamine and, and Ruby uh, unfuse and be like, ah, it's us, but they've got Greg and they've got him by the hair. And Ruby pulls out Ruby, uh, the Ruby knife from, uh, Eyeball pulls out the knife from her Eyeball gem. And Greg says like, oh, I've had enough of this or something. And grabs it and cuts his hair to free himself. And he now has short hair. Which, by the way, I think may ruin Steg. If Steg appears at any point in the future now, no. I'm, I'm going to be kind of concerned. Steg's not going to be... Not gonna is, that, is it bad that Steg, Steg was my first thought? <laughs> was Steg, was Steg <laughs> your first thought too? Yeah, Steg <laughs> was literally my first thought. Oh no, like, oh. Steg's hair! <laughs> literally. Um, I think they could have had... It was a really nice moment. I think it was um, I think it was dramatic. It's weird. Like, if you look at my memory of it, and obviously I then watched another episode and then would you know did this but my memory is like the actual close-up of him cutting the hair <laughs> he's not cutting that much hair <laughs> is that right he's, he's cut it all it's... have a look at it see if i'm I've wrong got it i might be wrong i've, I've got it up here let me have a look <laughs> and i'm happy to be wrong no, no, I, I, let me just have a look i'm curious because you might be right you might be right 
So here's the shot of him being held by the... Oh, being held by the... Oh, my sound just turned on, wasn't it? Because... Oh, dear. What is what is happening here, Chris? It's all gone wrong. Know. It's all gone wrong. For their sound down. There we go. Yeah. Now, that What's was the problem. Right? I, had the sound, I had the sound up. Yeah, from, from when uh, I from when I did Aquamarine, Aquamarine's voice, yeah. so they so they got him held by the hair. He's looking pretty frustrated. They're talking to Steven. Skip, 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 skip. But they talk for a while, don't they? Uh, oh, I'll... there you go. No, he cuts it cleanly, actually. Yeah, but is there quite a bit of hair in the cut? Yeah, it looked like quite okay. Fair enough. Yeah, not like I say. Happy to be wrong. Um, I do think that it was potentially um, you could have squeezed a little bit of you could have squeezed a little bit of emotion out of it. I think you could have because fundamentally he at least my interpretation was that he cut his hair because he knew he knew that Stephen was going to catch him, so he knew he'd get out of the danger because he knew that Stephen wouldn't let him you know fall and, and injure himself or worse. Greg is human. Let's remember that. Mm. Like potentially that fall, if he'd have landed badly, could have yeah, you know he was, killed he was, him. He was falling um, off the roof of of, of the of the uh, you know of, the, of that little beach house thing they've got. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So I think that you could have had a. I knew you'd catch me. Even if, even at the beach later, like you know, oh, I did it. Why'd you do it? Like, well, I was in danger, and I knew you would save me. You know, you could have had a nice little. I think you could have got some. You could have squeezed that lemon for a bit of emotional juice. I think. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, I, but they do do it at the end. Obviously, they have the, the, the. I mean, the ending of the episode is literally Stephen and Greg mourning his hair. Yeah, but you could have just insert some dialogue about you know how the hair is 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 a perfectly fine sacrifice when he's always got. Stephen, I mean, make it better than that. Yeah, <laughs> I just, yeah, I see what you're saying. Um, what? Yeah, I mean, I, well, I think they, they did a really. I, I, they didn't do that, and that would have been nice. I agree, but I do think they had a really nice moment between them at the end. I talked about it earlier, but the, you know, the, I love how you believe in everyone. I'm really proud of you. You know, everyone can change, just not everyone wants to, which is yeah. just a great nice. line from Greg because it really does give the episode a bit of pathos. It didn't previously pathos that it previously didn't have. Um, and then obviously they immediately come, you know, dovetail that into a joke, which is goodbye, old pal. You're finally free, <laughs> which is the line he gives to his hair as it floats away in its fucking Roman funeral. <laughs> so ridiculous. All they needed was someone to shoot an arrow of fire into it. Like that would have been that would have been the way. Have um, you ever have you ever kept hair? No. Have you? That's gross. Yeah, I cut off all my hair for charity and. uh because basically, my friend Jim and I, who Dan's met, were house captains uh, at our school. Which meant every there were four houses. It was like Hogwarts. There were four houses, and each house had two house captains. And for some reason, it was Jim and I. And at the beginning of the uh, year, our house head was like, "Right, I want you to raise a thousand pounds for charity." And we were like, "No problem." And then it got to like May, June, like two months before the end of the school year, and we were like, "Shit, we need to, we need to somehow find a way to earn some money quick." Um, not that we didn't care about charity, we were just young and useless. So, uh, one day Jim was like, I had really long hair at the time, and Jim was like, you could shave your head and I could shave my legs, I could get my legs waxed, and we're like, yep, let's do that. Uh, and, uh, yeah, kept the hair, we were going to do something with it, can't remember what, and it just stayed in a bag in my wardrobe for ages, and it was grim. Yeah. Well, we'll come back to that next week, because I have a suspicion Onion has Greg's hair. Oh wow! And by the way, Dan, you obviously you've not you've not asked the obvious question. Go on. Did we do it? Did we raise a thousand pounds? Surely that's what you want to know. Well, in my head, I went. In my head, I went. I assume they did, but now you're now well, the Dan. way you're doing that, I'm thinking maybe you didn't. But also, I just well, love you, you. I love that you skipped a step there because you went. We need a way to raise money, and Jim said, "You cut your hair. I'll shave my legs." <laughs> And like, I think to people not connecting the dots there, I assume you went around saying like, do do you know, donate money to sponsor us doing the weird shit rather than just oh, assuming yeah, yeah, yeah. that you'd get money yeah, we for got, having done that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got sponsored and then we went to him and we didn't, we didn't quite make the grand and, uh, and our house had set, we went to him and apologized before handing over the money and we felt really bad. And he How said, much did lads, you raise? Listen. He, well, I'll tell you that in a sec. He said, okay. lads, listen. 
Don't worry about it. The reason I the reason I gave you the target of a thousand pounds is because I was just hoping for five hundred. It's not a problem. And we said, Oh, that's amazing, thank you. And then handed over four hundred and forty six pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the year, the year after us, uh, one of those smug house captains raised a thousand pounds within the first three weeks. Yeah, what, did he, what, 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 what were they doing? I think he like held like a concert or something. He was one of those people, you know. Smart. <laughs> Not to sound like the bad guy. He was one of those people. But... He was smart and capable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which, which Jim and I were. <laughs> Jim and I's house captainship is summed up. We went away with like all the house captains and like school officers or something. Jess always thinks I was. I went to school at Hogwarts, but anyway, we went on like a camping trip, and I remember the fire and it was beautiful and the the flames were blazing and everyone was just chit chatting and there was a moment silence and Jim just turned to me and he said, uh, "When you want to know something in class, do you ever think about just Destiny's Child doing it?" And I went, what are you talking about? And you know, and he went, you know, just being like, question. So, and I just, yeah, that sums, that sums up Jim and I's house captains, I think. Yeah. I annoy all my staff at work with that because they'll always say, a uh, question? And I'll always go, tell me what you think about me. And they hate me. They hate me. <laughs> no, that's because, that's because none of your staff could remember Destiny's Child. <laughs> yeah. All of my staff are star babies they're all children they like they like they look at me so strange so often because of, like the other day someone said something about football now i was like ah oh, weebles wobble but they don't fall down and they looked at me like i was a fucking lunatic um but for those of you who do remember weebles wobble but they don't fall down you're on my team <laughs> anyway literally back to the episode so um what are we talking about uh yeah so i thought we got a really nice like s- solid moment with greg at the end um and i and i do i really do just love that he manages to sum up the episode have a joke and memorialize his hair in about four lines like i love how you believe in everyone i'm proud of you everyone can change just not everyone wants to and that's a really important steven for lesson for steven to learn and uh, arguably you'd almost have wanted a bigger episode to him to for you know a bigger more prominent episode for him to learn that in where that's a bit more at the front and center rather than sort of well, not an afterthought that's that's way too harsh but it you know it, it's it's baked into the premise of the entire episode but it's only laid out right at the end in one sentence do rather you, than do you need a bigger do you need a bigger episode for that or do you need it just interspersed into some of the dialogue and some of the the motifs i could on? yeah i could see that i could yeah i'd be okay with them building that into mm. um the whole show the like yeah as a theme um but it's yeah it's a great moment and, it, and i think they do, they, do they managed to do a lot with those last couple of months like the last two scenes well it helps justify them not being defeated as well <laughs> yes like just mm. Yeah, there Some you go. Some people don't want to change. Yeah. I take it there's no triv, Dan? Uh, no triv, but just a couple of little notes that I've got. Um, the, the new picture replacing Rose in the house, because obviously Rose's picture got taken down last week. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a new picture now, and it's Stephen in the Crystal Gems with Cat Stephen in the middle in a very ornate thing. It's probably a, a, Vidal, a Vidalia special uh, based on the art style, but it might not be. But yeah, if, I was, if I was a betting man, Chris. Um, oh, yeah, I got that wrong earlier, didn't I? It's not Amethyst that draws. It's Vidaldi- Vidalia that draws Amethyst. Yes. Yeah, I did sort of ah, go like, yeah. Bad, right? And I was thinking, have I forgotten an episode where Amethyst was drawing? No, I I, I stand, I correct myself on that and apologise for my error. Ah. I didn't I didn't realise it was, was an error. I just thought I was not remembering an episode. <laughs> um, I think it's always wiser to assume you have a better memory of this show than me. <laughs> As well, we'll come, we'll come to my memory in a minute. Um, the intro music from Change Your Mind, um, the Change Your Mind song, plays in this episode as Stephen gives his sappy little speech that they don't like. Mm. Sappy little speech. That's that's how the episode like plays that. it. Like he's making a speech and they're rolling their eyes like, oh, I just hate Stephen so much. It's great. Um, so yeah, that, that, that little music piece that's playing in the background is from the song Change Your Mind. It's that little spacey intro before he, he sings it. Um uh i love the uh, zach's delivery um on are you kidding me when they fuse because they hate him is just one of the best deliveries yeah it was great he's amazing uh, in this episode he's got another really corking line in the next one we'll talk about um when they unfuse just a little animation detail when when the alexandrite defuses it's garnet stood on the ground and she's holding both <laughs> both pearl and amethyst up it's, it's just a really weird little it's like it's only a few seconds on the screen 
But it, you don't, I, like, it, I only noticed it because someone pointed it out on the Discord of, I think, Latte. But it's such a, when I rewatched it, I was looking out for it. And it is just a really funny visual um, of, of, of the way they defuse. And then they're just, it's gone. It's stood on the ground holding Pearl and Amethyst. It's just, I don't know. I just, yeah. they, they could have just had funny. all, they no, could have just defused into them laugh. standing there. But instead, she's holding them up. I thought that was nice. Um, and then the final, yeah. um, little thing which again might actually come from latte on the discord so it turns out that eating grass is like really bad for you um and that will almost certainly be censored when it airs in the uk because one of aquamarine's you know in quote unquote marks pranks is that she's found earth food and mm. wants steven to try some and it, it means he ends up having to eat grass it's really bad for you it's really bad for your teeth um and is it that, really yeah like really bad for you um we've and... all done it though haven't we i reckon i've probably eaten grass as a kid yeah probably which is probably why that that message has been put out there maybe to, to get kids not doing that um I'm, right. sh- I'm sure as a very young kid I, I did yeah for sure um i don't I remember e- i think i i think i remember eating yellow snow which i look back on and shudder about Ugh. i'm sorry um what <laughs> I think as a kid, like I, as a young kid, before I realised that it was piss or shit, I think I remember like like playing snow cones and like, yeah, I think I remember at one point I may have accidentally eaten some some snow and it was it was discoloured snow, which I uh, I don't like to think about that too much, Dan. No, do you remember earlier when I said that after the election results were in the darkest timeline? Mm. That now we're in the darkest timeline. <laughs> But if I'm, if I'm, if I'm, does it change your whole perception of me? If, I, if I'm remembering it right, the entire time you've known me, I once would have licked some yellow snow. I think we need to move on because I'm grossed out by that. Just hearing you say it, and I know you. I can't imagine the listeners want to hear that any more than I do. That is horrible. You yeah, I know. I, well, I, my memory is hazy. I might be wrong. I certainly remember holding some and not really realizing why right. it was a different color. Right. I'm going to imagine that's yeah. what it was. <laughs> Let's hope. It. Let's hope, Dan. Um, yeah, but I think that's all my notes for it. Uh, let me see if there's any trivia on the page. I doubt there is. It's only only aired 12 hours ago, not even. God, it only... Aired, mate, this episode aired like eight hours ago. <laughs> I know. It's crazy. Uh, let's have a look. Trivia. A new painting of the Crystal Gems is seen in the Place of Roses before. Yep, we've talked about that. Cultural references. When Ruby and Aquaman depart, they disappear in a similar way to Team Rocket Trio from Pokemon Anime. Boom. Excuse me. Um, Steven also, and James. Joe Pesci's tooth from Home Alone. Also, yeah, can we get that added, please? Uh, continuity and Steven uh, and the Gems once again hide in the bathroom to discuss their cert- concerns about a new character. That's like a repeating joke. And Aquamarine continues to refer to Stephen, uh, Stephen, uh, Greg as Stephen's my dad, referencing the events of her debut episodes, Are You My Dad? and uh, I Am My Mom. Um, oh, music. Change your mind. Instrumental. And haven't you noticed I'm a star? So I'm not the only one who noticed that either. I didn't think I would be, but it's nice to see. Um, also, Return of the Hot Dog Duffel Bag. thought that was neat. Mm-hmm. Steve yeah, that, that was nice. At the beginning of the episode. But um, very quickly, just very quickly, um, on the subject, uh, as I hinted at a minute ago, of me not remembering things correctly, um, evidently I should never have an anime podcast um, <laughs> because apparently fair bit of what i said last week in terms of timings and stuff of when things aired was wrong um also i mean one thing i will say is for the people who kept saying well dragon Ball Z wasn't the first shonen i may have phrased it that way and if i did i'm sorry but i don't i didn't i, I didn't think dragon Ball would have been the very first i just first to popularize it is probably what i was I feel like I meant because that's what I thought. Like that's that's yeah. I I I my my opinion on it has always been that it was what popularized it and therefore made the genre go into hyperdrive. There were superhero movies, you know, before the the MCU, but it was the MCU that made it superhero movies like these. In well, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man movies, obviously. I guess this is what I'm saying. It's it's always a bit complicated when it's like what was the first of a thing. There's always a bunch of things that lead up to the big thing. Does that make sense? So mm-hmm. uh, when I referred to like Sailor Moon as being one of the first like big magical girl things, I was sort of uh, 
I assumed there'd been stuff that had been in that that genre that had led to that but its popularity then made the whole genre like even more popular um like was the thing that first burst it particularly i think in western for western audiences which is obviously my perspective on the whole thing um but yeah i'm sure i'm yeah um, so a lot of what i said was apparently wrong and i should never ever have an anime uh, an anime podcast so there you go um bianca can stop asking for it we've proven that i don't know enough um to to do one Tune in next week for another episode of Dan Apologises for Talking About Anime While Chris Phases Out. Excellent. Find out what, what we talk about next week. Um, so yeah, I think that's everything. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything else I've got to say on the episode. I, I, I think overall, if we just to very quickly recap, I think it's a really, really solid episode, only mildly hampered by the the threat level being sort of very seriously adjusted for Aquamarine uh, and that being a bit of a shame. I think it's. I th- thought it was great. I think it's. Um, I think there were a few things you could do to little tweaks here and there to enhance it. But fundamentally, I think it's. You know, I think it's up there with volleyball. It certainly is in, in the same vein. Whilst not, in my personal opinion, as strong in the same vein as volleyball, it does an awful lot with those twenty minutes and is quite layered. Um, and yeah, if you don't, if you don't remember so much the uh, aquamarine thing, then. It's a nice rompy episode. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On board. So that's uh, everything for, for for this one. Obviously, return to us in a couple of days' time um, for the, for the next one. Um, but that's I think that's everything for this week. So I've been Dan Doolan. Next one's a very special episode. Well, I, was, I didn't say like... the name on purpose because we do it at the we do it in the outro. Oh, all right. Calm down. Jesus. Whew. Right, someone's someone's upset about that yellow snow and the government. Right, <laughs> you ready? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's ruined my day. Uh, <laughs> Here we are in the future. <laughs> I've been Dan Dillon. I've been Chris Billingham. I'll come back in a couple of days' time for us to discuss a very special episode. Well, that wasn't effective. You've just already said the episode title, Dan. Jeez. The darkest timeline. <laughs> <laughs> Go. Cool.